uh, get everybody clued in. Emily, do you know the microphone plugged in? With that and get all of our final techie stuff um, arranged so that we can do this thing. Uh, I'm trying to figure out my phone here. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, it's going to be a great Good Friday. We got a great service plan for you. Got the, the communion table here. We'll be having communion um, during the evening and uh, having some song and worship. About 30 minutes long service. It's not going to go real long, but it's just a time to stop during the day and focus in on the most important thing on Christ and what he's done for us on the cross. And so use this time, these uh, these minutes that we have before we get started to um, get your communion elements together. If you don't have them already, um, get some bread, uh, some crackers, some tortillas, uh, whatever you got around, and then uh, grape juice if you prepared for that or uh, other um, beverages that uh, you would use to remember the body and the blood of Christ that's been broken for us. I'm trying to figure out how to get my phone up here onto um, Facebook and catch this thing. Uh, so we can get this here. Let me hand this off to somebody here to get, let's see if we can get me on live. Find, let me come on my phone here and find uh, the service. Of course, Emily, why don't you come over here and um, get this thing. Find, find Facebook for me on there like everybody else out there. So we're on, on YouTube Live and Facebook Live um, this evening and hope you can catch us one place or the other. Our church website is calvarylompoc.org, O-R-G, and there's lots of information there. We're not broadcasting there tonight, um, but we will be on, on Sunday morning. You can catch us there. Um, our worship this Sunday morning for Easter is going to drop at 7 a.m. <clears throat> and for you early birds out there, you can watch it anytime you want to after that. But um, 7 a.m. will get you, uh, it'll be available to you there and you can you can tune in. And you can find that at calvarylompoc.org. Um, there's a page called Sundays and you can go there and you click there and you'll find the service going, going right on there. And at the bottom of that page, you'll find sermon notes. You can always kind of scroll down and find that. And um, print those out ahead of time and be ready for the sermon on Sunday morning. Or you can find us here on YouTube if you're there at Calvary Lompoc, Calvary Baptist Lompoc is where you'll find us on YouTube and our channel there. And both of these places, these services get recorded so you can go back and you can watch them at later times if that doesn't work for you or you want to watch them again. A lot of people have been going back and seeing them multiple times. So that's uh, that's been a great thing as well too. So who do we got here on Facebook? Um, Bob and Judy Harper. Um, welcome Bob and Judy, so glad to have you guys here at our Good Friday service this evening. And um, Emily and Daniel are here and uh, uh, got about 10 people out there watching all together. If, if you're out there, say hi. We'd love to say hi to you. We so miss worshiping with everybody and our, even our one minute welcome time. We're going to have to have a one hour welcome time once we all get back together to uh, be able to be with each other. But uh, say hi to us out here so we can say hi to you and know that we're all kind of hanging out together. Um, share this video with people. If, if you got friends who are, who, uh, you know, aren't doing anything or need to be focusing in on, on Christ, invite them. You got, we got five more minutes or so before we uh, get the service underway. So you got time to send the link to, to your friends. Um, Hebrews tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And that's what we're going to do tonight in our Good Friday service to fix our eyes on him. Let me read just a little bit of um, scripture for us to get us uh, uh, get our minds going. Out of, out of Luke, as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene who was coming in from the country and laid him on the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there they followed a great multitude of women who were mourning and lamenting. For him. By turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves, for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren wombs that never bore and breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and the hills cover us. For these things, when the wood is green, what will happen when it's dry? So Jesus has a little prophecy there. Um, Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. They cast lots to divide his garments and the people stood by watching. But the ruler scoffed at him, saying he saved others. Can't he save himself? 
if he's the son of God, the chosen one. Soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And they also put an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanging there with him railed, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and save us while you're at it. But the others rebuked him saying, do you not fear the love of, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And indeed we justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And Jesus said, he said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And when he said to him, truly, I say to you today, you'll be with me in paradise. So a little bit of reading out of the gospel of Luke. Again, welcome. If you just tuned in, just found us, just joined us, we'll be starting our Good Friday communion service in just a, just a few minutes here. I'm so delighted that you are with us. Um, Alan and Patty Clark, good to see you guys here. Marva, Phil and Marva Osborne, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad that you're here worshiping with us. De La Vegas, i um, got the, the whole crowd there. Annie, hello. So glad that you're, you're with us here. Uh, Marin and Camille Smith, Oh, love you guys. So glad that you are here too. Dan Everest. We got everybody. All the cool people are here. Um, and you guys. So again, invite your friends. You got a few minutes to send out a, a link or text message and tell people they can find us on YouTube at Calvary Lompoc, uh, Calvary Baptist Lompoc, if you search for that, or if you're on Facebook at our Calvary Lompoc Facebook page. That's where we are and, and broadcasting tonight. So Again, we're super glad that you're here. We will be having communion in a few minutes, so make sure you get your communion elements, um, something, some bread, uh, tortillas, chips, crackers, bread, whatever you have, something to drink, um, and be prepared for communion. We'll have some worship. Pastor Jeff will be leading us into the Word and, and focusing in on Christ and, and what He's done for us. So. Um, be prepared with that. And again, a uh, reminder, Sunday morning, um, 7 a.m., the worship service will drop. It'll be available at calvarylompoc.org on our Sunday page and also at uh, YouTube at our Calvary Baptist Lompoc YouTube page. It'll be available at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning. Then it'll be available all day long. And you can go back to our website, calvarylompoc.org. You can watch all the great past sermons and other worship times that have been there too. So know that that's available. Liz, Linda, welcome. Dad. Diana, um, so good. Yes, Diana, good spending Good Friday with you too. And we wish we were all here together, but it's it's going to be great. Yeah, Tanya and Tim Flowers uh, on YouTube. Tanya and Tim Flowers on YouTube. Awesome. Tanya, Tim Flowers, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you guys. We'll give this one more minute and then we'll, we'll jump in. So, um, Daniel, you got your one minute cue there. But. Again, welcome to Calvary Baptist Church of Lompoc. We are delighted that you're joining us today for our Good Friday service. And we're going to be fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And we're going to come before the table of the Lord. We're going to listen to the word of the Lord. And we're, we're doing it together all at the same time. We're just not as close as we wish we were. But uh, God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. And his spirit is here with us. His spirit is with you. The same spirit, um, the Bible even says, if we go to the far side of the sea, even he is there as well. So um, it's going to be good. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just commit this evening to you. We pray uh, that you would manifest your presence among us. Let us sense your presence in the word and the elements and worship and habit our praises, Lord. Uh, thank you for this technology that we can worship together in this way. And Father, may your truth get out to many, many people. We want to lift Jesus up because when we do, we know that you, Jesus, will draw people to yourself. And we want to draw near to you this evening. So bless our time in your name. So welcome to Calvary's online Good Friday service. Daniel Frotz, why don't you come on up and lead us in some worship. All right. Where am I looking? Either way, either one, I guess. Um, <laughs> Again, I just want to say glad that you're joining us uh, tonight. Um, I'll just shoot another reminder to make sure that you have uh, your communion elements ready to go um, with you. Uh, we'll be uh, taking part together um, while we're apart. Um, so can't wait for that. Um, as we're about to start, is it seven? Time, time's up, time's up. Okay, um, let's uh, sing together. Uh, this is Man of Sorrows. Man of 
sorrows, Lamb of God, by His own betrayed the sin of men and wrath of God has been on Jesus. Silent as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, he took a crown of thorns. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation. Where your love poured out over me, now my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Praise and honor unto Thee, Saint of Heaven, God's own Son. To purchase and redeem and reconcile the very ones who nailed him to that tree. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Hallelujah, praise and honor unto Thee. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah. Praise and honor unto Thee. Praise and honor unto Thee. Well, I hope you're saying amen while you're at home after listening to that. We are practicing social distancing, just so everybody knows that. We are all six plus feet apart. Uh, everybody has their own communion elements. They all pick them themselves, and we've all done those things the right way. And uh, Good Friday. Um, sometimes we wonder, why do we say Good Friday? In the, in the ancient way, uh, actually, this is an old term that actually meant holy way back, and it has roots in another language as well. And, but the reason we can say Good Friday is because of what it's pointing toward. But on the original Good Friday, it was not that way. It was a dark time. And, and it's really important for us to go back 3,000 years to the original Passover because our celebration at communion is actually rooted in the celebration of the Passover. In fact, I was reminded uh, on my, even on my way here tonight as I was listening to different people complaining in a sense and kind of wondering what, wishing we could be together. But it, it hit me on the way here that the original Passover actually took place in individuals' homes. They were required on that night by the commandment of God to take the lamb that they would eat that night, 
to take the blood from that lamb and put it on the doorposts of their home. And the family units were all in one unit. And nobody was to go anywhere else. They had to be in that particular home. And, and the reason they put the blood on the door doorpost was it said, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. And of course, we know that God fulfilled that promise that night, that all of Israel was protected. And because of the plague that came, that it forced the people of Egypt to say, please go ahead and leave. And the Exodus began. And from that point on, they would celebrate the Exodus. They would celebrate that Exodus at Passover. When we go to communion, in some ways, we are celebrating our own Exodus. We celebrate our Exodus from sin that Jesus' blood has delivered us from. That's why when we come to this table, that's what we'll be doing. But it's always good to recount the work of God when we do these celebrations. And that's what happens at Passover. They recount the journey with God. And so when we think about that in the Exodus story, we think about now our own story. We think about our own journey. How did we get to the point where I became somebody of faith? And to kind of think through that stuff. And, and so often, particularly if it's somebody like me who came to Christ later in life, at the age of 30, I can look back even then and I can see God in my life during times I was completely rejecting him. And it's good to recount that part of the journey. And then, of course, to recount, to remember that journey of, of the salvation moment and the, in, the, in the immediate pieces preceding, following up after that. And then also to recount what he's been doing in our life since then. And so as we go into tonight, it's important for us to think, and as Pastor Dan was reading that scripture, to recount the journey of Christ in that sense. As we, as we in this process of resurrection week, and we look forward to, to Sunday, and we look into this, this last supper, in a sense it's been called that, as Jesus is, we believe Jesus is celebrating a Passover meal based on some of the things that go on in that story. But he's journeyed into Jerusalem at this point, and on Palm Sunday we talked about the celebration of him coming in, but how quickly that switched, so that by the time the Last Supper comes, everybody's starting to understand Jesus is in a different mood. He's in a different mood. And at that Last Supper, and we'll replicate that in a little bit, we see him pass the elements, so we call the elements now. But remember, the Last Supper is where Jesus establishes the new covenant that we now operate under. That, op that new covenant in which the, the blood of Jesus Christ frees us from our sins and sets us on the life abundant that we can find in Jesus Christ. And the shedding of blood had to take place for that to happen. Jesus had been telling his disciples over and over that's what he would do, but they weren't getting it yet. And I think we have to give them a little bit of a break. We wouldn't have gotten it either. I mean... How can you conceive of somebody coming back from the dead the way he was talking about? And so we understand that confessing Jesus is Lord and believing that he was raised from the dead that will be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's what the blood does. Just like the blood on the doorway at the original Passover protected them, now the blood of Jesus Christ protects us in that sense, in the, in the eternal sense. At that Last Supper, Right after it is over, Jesus goes off and he prays. He goes off, and, and this is a, a, a prayer time where he, where he brings some, some of the disciples with him. And he even brings Peter along, who's already told Peter, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. The one that arguably was the leader of the apostles. He said, you're going to deny me three times. And so he's there. And in the and we find Jesus praying and, and, and very often we actually most of the scriptures we don't know what was going on in his prayer time we know he did it a time. he's actually a confession of a sense because it says his soul was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death and when we read what he prayed the words of his prayer were if it's possible he's praying to the father if it's possible may this cup be taken from me yet not as I will but as you will. Jesus was fully aware of everything that he was going to have to about to go through. And it wasn't just going to be being nailed to the 
the cross. And we'll get a little farther into that. But he said, this cup, this cup actually is symbol, kind of symbolic in a sense of wrath. That, you know, if there's a way for me not to do it, he actually, there's a part of the story is he goes back to the disciples and it's late at night and they're kind of sleepy. And he kind of challenges them, hey, I need you to stay awake for me. And he goes back in prayer. But we actually see a change in Jesus' prayer at this point. He actually, in his heart's desire, said, I don't want to do this if I don't have to. If there's any other way, Lord, but your will, not mine. And so this is his second prayer. It sounds very similar, but it's actually different. He says, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. So in a sense, there was an implication. He was saying, look, I, I understand I'm not going to be able to get out of this. I understand I need to drink this cup, this cup of wrath. I need to do this. And at this point, there's actually a description that Jesus, the anguish of Jesus was so much that he actually was dropped, blood, blood, capillaries were breaking and blood was coming down his face as if he was sweating. It's right after that prayer time, as we picture him in that garden, that Jesus gets arrested. Judas, we know, is the betrayer, that Jesus gets arrested. Judas, we know, is the betrayer. Judas brings a crowd of people and a couple soldiers, and they find Jesus, and Jesus says, he says he, he's the one they're looking for. Actually, Judas gives a kiss on the cheek to identify him. And at that point, he's arrested. And we know everybody abandons him at that point. The disciples run. They're tra- challenging him. It actually, we in his court case, we find out that he was actually declared innocent twice by the Roman part of his trials. He was declared innocent. We also find out it's during that time that Peter does indeed deny Jesus three times. In the process of that trial taking place and the false accusations that were being brought about him, we find out that he's spit on, that he's punched, that he's slapped. He'd be forced to wear a painful crown of thorns these Jerusalem thorns were almost like mini nails. It was shoved onto his head. He'd be whipped horribly. If you've ever seen the Passion of Christ, you probably you can get a really good picture in your mind of what that was taking place. And then as up a hill to where he's going to be crucified. He's forced to carry what we understand is probably the top part of that cross. He's forced to carry that. I mean, in our modern time, it'd almost be like, if you're going to be executed and something makes you load up the gun, or if you're going to be electrocuted, you have, you're the one who has to throw the switch. I mean, the humiliation was total at this point. And then as he's hanging on the cross, even while he's there, hanging, and understand he's hanging naked so that he could be totally humiliated. That was the purpose of this kind of death. He continues to show grace and mercy, and even forgiveness on behalf of those who are mocking him, those who are who are the instruments of his death. As he's hanging on the cross, he's looking at these people who are gambling for his clothes right in front of him, the indignity of that. And he's asking the Father to forgive them because they don't know what they're going to do. More is that he's still out of himself. He's still selfless on the cross as, as he sees his mother, his, Mary is there. Now Mary, we understand that she's probably a widow at this point. And as the oldest son, he was the caretaker of his wife. She didn't have a means of a livelihood. So with Jesus dying, her can be destitute. It's a subtle piece of story we don't know if we don't study the, the culture of the time. And and here on the cross, he looks at John, the Apostle John, and he says to John, this is your mother, and now you are her son. And he has actually established now a new familial relationship in which Mary can be taken care of after his death. Even on the cross, he has taken care of those around him. Those are, but then... The cross itself, he dies on the cross. And there's all kinds of prophecies that get met about his body being pierced, his bones not being broken. All these Old Testament prophecies are fulfilled at this point. But at his death, 
it's it's almost as if creation itself is is revolted by the death of the Savior, by the death of the Creator. And we find that the skies had darkened, that there was darkness for hours. We, you know, people want to try to trivialize that as a, as a, as an eclipse. Well, yeah, it could have been an eclipse, but God orchestrated it for that time frame. But also there was an earthquake. There was this earthquake. The ground shook. And you think about it, the ground shook, the very ground that the creator would be placed into. And he'd be put into the tomb, shook. Like I said, almost in a, in a, a revolted by what the human race had done to the creator. And then another remarkable piece takes place even then. During those time periods, it says that at the moment of his death, and as his earthquake hit, that the huge curtain in the holy temple, the temple, the, the curtain that separated the most holy place from the rest of everything else, the most holy place in which only one person once a year, the high priest, could go to atone for the sins of the Jewish nation. That was ripped from top to bottom. And this wasn't any some flimsy curtain. This was a heavy-duty material that was huge in height. And it, it was ripped from top to bottom. And you could almost see as if God, God ripped it himself all the way down to the bottom and pulled it aside. And there's incredible symbolism there that, the, that now it's not one man once a year who can go to atonement. He's now opening up his throne room to all of us. That all of us now, because of a faith in Jesus Christ, we have full access to God's throne room. In fact, because of that, we're told we can approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's what happened at the moment Jesus dies. At that day, on that day, hope had been crucified. We stopped, but for them at that point, the story stopped. We later on we Jesus. He became victorious, even over grants all of us who follow him and believe in him new life. So we're going to go to communion here. I'm going to kind of give you a little time to kind of get yourself situated. Pull that out. You know, I have I have my little loaf here myself, and I have my little alone. We do it in relive as new creations in Him. And then we're also told that we do this as a way of proclaiming the Lord's death until He comes back, and will come back and redeem the earth and redeem everything. And you know what? With everything that's going on with COVID nineteen. We can get a picture. We're getting a picture right now of what the recreated earth will be. We have rivers that are nice. You can see downtown LA from 25 and 30 miles away. They're actually seeing the top of Mount Everest and the Himalayas for the first time that people can remember in a long time. And, we, and we're getting this picture. Skies literally are bluer, folks. It's not because it's not imagination. Our skies are bluer because they're cleaner. And it's just a picture. It's just a snapshot. But when Christ comes back, he is going to heal our earth. Just as he's healing, has already healed us for forgiveness of sins, he's going to heal everything. So that's what we proclaim, is that peace. And I just love the fact that in a tough situation that we're living in right now, we're getting some pictures of what that will look like in the future. Incredible pictures of what that could look like. So if you'll join me right now and, and take, take the bread in your hand with his disciples. He comes and it says that he, gave, he broke the bread. And he said he gave thanks. He broke it. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So take and eat.
And before we do the take the, let me say a prayer. Lord, I want to say to you, thank you again. Thank you for who you are. The Lord God Almighty. You are the God who created the earth by your spoken word. That you delivered them in the exodus from Egypt and established them in the Holy Land. You are the God who continued to bless them and then to punish. And then as they repented, to restore them. And we're reminded throughout scripture that you are a God who pursues us relentlessly. That the moment we say, Lord, I've messed it up. I need to come back to you. You say, yes, come back to me. And restore us, you restore us in fullness to you. Lord, as we take communion tonight, that's what we want to remember. That our sins are forgiven by the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. And we want to acknowledge that, that we need that sin, and you've given us that incredible gift of eternal life. So we lift this up to you in Christ's name. Amen. So the supper would proceed, and then, as the scripture says, he came to the end. And it says, in the same way, it says he took up, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So take and drink. Daniel's going to come up and do another song, and then after he's done, I'll, I'll do a closing prayer. We're going to be singing, Lead Me to the Cross. Sam. 
now I belong to you. Don't leave me. You know, you got to see three of us, Dan Bergstrom and Daniel Frox and myself, but two really important people always want to say thank you to those you don't get to see. And so we thank you for that. I want to remind you, you know, Sunday, as you already heard from Dan, we will be back uh, for our Sunday service. I do want to encourage you tomorrow, and I sent an email earlier this week too, that um, I'll be fasting tomorrow. And so I'd ask you to join me in that fast, uh, if it's just one meal, whatever level you can participate. And really, so a couple things for the purpose of the fast. One is that God would actually imp- would, would enlarge our footprint of reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then second, we would allow him to make the changes that he's drawn, putting in our lives right now, that they would become permanent for when we were able to start gathering together. And also just so you know, that first Sunday when we do get to regather, we are going to celebrate. It will be a party, just so you know. So let me close in prayer on this Good Friday. Thank you for what you us. Thank you for going into the grave. Lord, thank I in order that we could have life. Lord, we want to remember that well and help us to have be bold and courageous in proclaiming that to the people around us. Help us to pass out the links so people can listen. Help, uh, help us to be inviting people for when we get to gather again, Lord, so that people can know the love of Christ, Lord, that they can be redeemed. We thank you again that you're with us. No matter what mode we're doing this, you are with us, and we thank you for that. We lift this night up to you. I pray it was a blessing to you, Lord. We lift, your, lift it up to you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.